thank the opportunity to talk. So this is my first time talking outside Brazil, and maybe my English is not very good, but please forgive me. Um, my name is Aline. I'm from Brazil, and I'm finishing my master's right now and starting my PhD next month. So this work I'm going to be showing you is my master's work, and it's about the formation of molecules in Titan's atmosphere. Um, first of all, I'd like to start um, telling you what's really interesting about Titan, because many people don't know all the features. Um, so first of all, we see the evidence of lakes really on the surface of um, the moon, just like the Earth, but um, it, they're basically formed by methane and methane, which are organic molecules, and you're going to see that a little bit later as well. We also see um, volcanism, just like the Earth, but um, some people believe there's a ocean of ammonia and water um, under the surface, so maybe this is a way of um, giving water to the surface of the, of the moon. And my favorite part is right here, that Titan is the only place in, in the solar system besides our planet that can, is able to build complex and organic molecules. So when I say complex, I'm talking about molecules which, are at, which have at least six or more atoms. And organic, they're basically formed by carbon and hydrogen. And we're going to see some molecules as well with nitrogen and oxygen. So um, a little bit um, of, about the chemistry. In Titan, so just like he said before me, we basically start everything with these two um, main molecules. So these are um, nitrogen and methane. So nitrogen is about 94, 95% in the atmosphere, and methane is like basically the rest of it. So this is where the chemistry all starts. We have two main influences, which are um, the solar radiation, um, basically in the U ultraviolet or extreme ultraviolet. And we have another source of um, particles, especially energetic pa particles like ions and electrons, which come from Saturn because of its heavy, um, because of its heavy magnetic field. So there are some particles coming from um, Titan's magnetosphere, that's what we call. And then these particles are going to be the second main influencer to start breaking these molecules and the chemistry starts. So basically with these two main influences, these two main molecules are going to break and we're going to start building more complex molecules from them. So basically we have um, two main things called the, uh, dissociation and the ionization of these two molecules. So this is of the, these are the two main processes that will create the, the bigger molecules in Titan. So just like the Earth, we can separate the, the atmosphere in different layers. But just to show you that here in the thermosphere is like the upper atmosphere, about uh, 1,000 to 1,400. Um, these are the two main molecules that I showed you, methane and nitrogen. So this area is where it all is where I'm going to start. So when we go down the atmosphere, we see the creation of more complex and organic molecules. We can see here um, compounds made by carbon and hydrogen. So when they're formed, they get um, heavier, and then they go down the atmosphere. So here in the lowest part, the, um, the second lowest part, the stratosphere, we see something we call aerosol haze layer, which are these um, organic molecules that start to condense and agglutinate, and they, they form ices and solid particles in the atmosphere. So this, um, which we call the haze layer, is the reason we see when we observe Titan, we see this very dense, very thick, um, kind of orange yellow atmosphere. It's because of these particles, these organic particles right here. So I'm going to talk now about my work. This is me, OK. And these are my two advisors from, from Brazil as well, from the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. 
So us three, we got, um, we, this is one of my advisors and she had this work with a student of hers where they developed a model to simulate atmosphere but not for Titan, they developed it to study hot Jupiters. So then me and my two advisors, me and my two advisors, we were like, oh, let's try this, um, let's try this chemical model for something different, for something that's um, more terrestrial maybe, and which we know a little bit more because hot Jupiters are not really well known. So we tried um, this, this chemical model for Titan, but the problem was we can only work with the upper atmosphere. That's not really a problem for us because as I showed you, the main chemistry work uh, is really in the upper atmosphere, the term thermosphere part. But, so basically this is why I studied um, Titan's upper atmosphere, so above um, a thousand kilometers. And in the, in the upper atmosphere we have um, this feature which is very important in my work, which is called the uh, at atmospheric escape. So some molecules are going to just escape the atmosphere as it happens here um, on Earth and as it happens in hot Jupiters and uh, other atmospheres. So this is how, by this mechanism, we're going to to analyze the formation of molecules in the atmosphere. So um, basically the first step of my, my work was we selected a bunch of species which we know from the literature that were in Titan's atmosphere. So I went to a database called the UMIST. I don't know if anyone here uses it. Um, it's a database for interstellar molecules. We had to adapt it to to put these molecules in Titan atmosphere. And when, after we selected these, these compounds, we, here in the database, we got all the reactions that these compounds go through. So here, for example, this is um, ethane, which is one of the main products of um, reactions in Titan. So here in the database, we have all the reactions that will happen with ethane for formation and for destruction as well. So we got all these reactions, we got all the, all the constants, and we put it on the equations, and this is, um, this is basically the work. So the last part is we put all that reaction in equations, in continuity, continuity equations, and we use the program to solve that. So basically, the continuity equation for the molecules is basically this one, which I is one molecule. So we have one separate equation for each molecule. We have like a, a hundred mo molecules or something. So the reactions go right here. This is a, the reactions product rate, and this is the loss rate. But our um, our model our model was um, unidimensional and stationary, so we didn't consider time. So this goes to zero, actually. Um, and then to, to um, put these molecules in my work, I had to put some previous profiles for the main molecules. So I put the profiles for nitrogen and for methane. I also used the profile for hydrogen, molecular hydrogen, because it's the main molecule that's going to escape the atmosphere. And since we're working with upper atmosphere, I used um, hydrogen as well. These two profiles are from this work in 2008. So this is our results. I'm gonna show you the main molecules we found. Um, basically, these three main molecules, which are called acetylene, um, ethylene, and ethane, are the three main um, products by reactions in Titan's atmosphere. So this is their abundances, and this is the al altitude. It's in the horizontal, but. Um, pretend like the, the Titan is here and the altitude is going that way. So these are the three, uh, the three main molecules we found by that um, product, by that reaction, sorry. And these are basically the hydrocarbon molecules. So we also find molecules with oxygen 
but I didn't mention oxygen before because it's not, um, it's initially not in Titan's atmosphere. It actually comes from Enceladus. So it has an inflow of oxygen, especially, especially oxygen ions in the atmosphere. So we, also, we can also see some, some oxygen bearing molecules here. And we see um, CO, which is basically, um, I guess, the fourth main molecule in, in the atmosphere. And it's really stable because its condensed temperature is really cold. So it basically doesn't condense in Titan's atmosphere. And the best part for me is that we also found nitrogen bearing molecules, which is important for life and stuff. So this is the main molecule we found, which is hydrogen cyanide. It's one of the basic molecules we can find um, in the interstellar medium. And we found different molecules as well. So we found, some, we found some complex molecules, which is great for us, because you can't see this like anywhere else in the solar system. So we found this one, for example, is for pionitrile. We found acetronitrile and this cyanoacetylintamate. And yes, that's a pretty great result for us. Um, Another thing we did in our work was um, try to show the difference between considering the energetic particles that come from Saturn's magnetosphere. So we tried to run the model with and without this influence of energetic particles. So I, I show you here um, some molecules and some ions. And we can see if, um, these, these dotted ones are without the magnetospheric influence and the solid ones are considering the ma uh, magnetospheric influence. So we basically discovered that this influence is especially in small molecules and ions. So the biggest molecules we found, they were not affected by these this, um, magnetospheric energetic particles. So basically, this, con this concludes my work. We found um, the abundances, the simulated abundances for compounds with carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. We got um, a pretty good simulation, considering we didn't um, consider other mechanisms like the haze formation, which is lower in the atmosphere. We just considered the upper atmosphere for this work. And we also found some visible effects of the influence of Saturn's magnetosphere. So for the future, what I want to do with this work, maybe not me, but some other student, we want to try to include more molecules in this model, especially maybe sulfur and phosphorus molecules, which are also really important if we want to find life somewhere. Um, we want to include the tholins and haze formations. Um, so we want to, to run the model for all the atmosphere, not just the upper atmosphere. And we want to try to do some lab experiments, trying to simulate that really in a chamber with all the molecules we found and see if that could develop anything else or anything different we, uh, from what we found in the, compute, uh, in the compute, computer model. Um, this is basically my work. So I'm open to any questions now if you have them. Thank you. Thank you very much for the. Uh -uh. Thank you very much for the talk. Uh, do we have any questions? Do we have time for maybe one or two? Um, hello. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so I have, my question is uh, about how you adapted the methodology from hot Jupiter's to your modeling. Okay, so we in when we had to put um each reaction in this continuity equation, equation, we have, for example, from the database, we have the reactions constants, co uh, constants, and then we put, on, we put on this continuity equation, but we add here a factor to, um, to consider the flux from Jeez. the sun 
and the flux from the energetic particles. No, sorry, it's actually here. So we have here the flux factor, then we add another constant here to, to consider this influence. So we did that for two different things, for the UV sunlight and then for the Saturn energetic particles. I just, um, I went through this part because it's, it's the hard work, it's not so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Any other? So I have a question related to shadow. When you said that uh, in your model, did you consider the uh, atmosphere uniform, like the concentration everywhere is uniform? We did. We did. We actually, um... Like, it just uh, changed with the latitude, not... Like, like yes, we consider the latitude all uniform. Um, but we actually know um, in Titan's atmosphere we have winds and circulation, um, convection, circulation. This is something else we could put in the model, but it's a really difficult thing to do. So, and since. Yeah, um, we did consider, but um, this here in the upper atmosphere, they're not really in chemistry equilibrium. So this is all the... Like... Yeah, we considered um, they're all going to... to they're going to be uniform, basically, as I said, in the latitude and, and everywhere else. But we just considered um, a one-dimensional uh, model. So this is, we actually work with the altitude dimension. I'm sorry to put it in the horizontal way. This is not very, this is very weird for me, but the model works like this. <laughs> so we only consider this direction. The other directions were not considered because it's really, really hard to put this. Unfortunately, I think we're running a little short on time, but uh, feel free to ask your questions uh, after the session during the break. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you.